this is an actual customer's PC that we're going to be building, and Nick is the best of the best. We're also going to be doing a speedrun challenge with him on Monday, aren't we, Nick? Maybe not. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to build a computer, he claims, in under 10 minutes. Let's try. He says he can do it in under 10 minutes. An easy one. An easy one. Something okay. like this. Something like this, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So, anyway. Let's get started. I'm going to be running around doing all of the, the camera work and stuff. And Nick is going to be building. Please do. So Let's do it. Take it away. Yeah, bye. So, I would say, first of all, tools. Don't even think of starting building a computer if you don't have the right tools. Screwdriver, a small one. I like to have a long one. We probably won't need it in this case, but sometimes you need to access very, very hidden screws. So, a long screwdriver would help. Cutters as we have some cable ties to cut, and I would suggest to keep a Stanley knife with you to open all the boxes very quickly. Then we have cable ties. You can do with the long one. If you have, also use some short ones, but if you don't have any short ones, just stick with the long ones, they will do the job just nice. Okay, so first of all, I would, I always say, start by opening all the components, except the case is very big, you wanna open it later on. So I usually start with the power supply, just because I like it, to make it very quickly, I just cut it here. I would keep some boxes like this. It can be a food container or a glass to have your, all your screws in one place. It's gonna be much easier to work. Flatten out the boxes so you won't fill up all your rubbish bin in one go. And just chuck it on the side. Then you can start opening the other component. We got the normal hard drive. And maybe you can keep the graphics card box as you want to use it to keep all your manuals inside and all the stuff that may come with a computer that you're not going to use for this build. And so, for example, I grab all of this stuff and I put it in here so they won't go lost. Motherboard. I will keep the motherboard box as well, as if you don't have an anti-static surface, it's always good. You can build a computer on the motherboard box. So here we got a nice motherboard. Backplate, very important. Don't forget to install the backplate. So maybe put it here next to your motherboard. That's what we see most of our... Uh, uh, that's a very common mistake. Here you have some other stuff. You can keep on putting it here. Okay, so that all happened insanely fast. Yeah, I am the Stanley knife. Genuinely great cannot tool. wait until we see Nick build something insanely fast. So, um, first tip, tools and everything out the box. Yes. Other than the case, other than the case, yeah. Why? I don't know, the case is really big, it's a massive box. So first of all, you need to install CPU, RAM, cooler on the motherboard. So what's the point of have the case on your desk when you just need to work on the motherboard, really? So I was working in production, so we need to be quick there. And this, for me, was the best and fastest way to, to build a computer. So we don't really need a case right now. The first thing I always install is the CPU. As you can see, there is a backplate here, a cover, because there are some pins underneath. These pins are really, really uh, fragile. You can easily break them. And if you break them, the warrant is gone. And it's gonna cost you quite a bit of money to repair them. So instead of removing this bit all before, which may bend the pins, I just open this. This will come up. You can see the pins here. I grab my CPU. Hang on, let's uh, show everybody this with the trusty old Nikon. So you can see there are some guides here that again are here on the motherboard, one and two. So we're just gonna, and there is always a corner here, which is also highlighted here. So what I usually do, like vertically, I literally leave the CPU in there, and then I just close this. And when I do this, the plastic bit will pop out nicely. <laughs> Impossible to damage the motherboard this way. Type number two, I will go for the cooler. Sometimes you may have a liquid cooling or whatever. If, uh, or an external air cooler, if it's a case of a liquid cooling, I would install it as last. So I will build the old computer first. I will just put the back plate needed for the liquid cooling, but I would install the actual, the actual block at the very end because it's a bit messy. This is a very, very simple cooler. Thermal paste is already here, as you can see, so no need to add it. So we need to find where the CPU fan goes and is here, very well highlighted. You see, CPU fan, you can't miss it. So we know that this cable is gonna go here. So we wanna make it easy. One thing, the computer is gonna stand like this and I would like to see the Intel logo vertical, properly nice. Not like this, not like this, so like this. So I just do like this and then I pin it in. Then I grab this cable and I make it pass underneath here where there is another gap, obviously. Voila. And Look then, at that cable management, folks. Then you can tidy it up nicely. Woo. Very simple and effective, in my opinion. 
and job done. Stage number two, I will go for the ram. So there is a little gap, it's not really in the middle. Don't make mistake by pushing the ram uh, the wrong way. If it doesn't go in, it means that it's uh, the wrong side. So I would say, if you wanna come here, the motherboard has some, uh, is, uh, the slots are numbered. So you get number one, number two, number three, number four. If you have one stick only, I would use the slot number one. So I try to put it in like this. As you can see, the gap is matching here. And from the two sides, I will push it like this until it clicks. Oh, that beautiful click. This way, it's very, very hard to damage the board. Be always gentle anyway, but I guess this is the very best way to do it. Gentle but firm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got these metal bits in some motherboard, especially the Asus one. Sometimes they are bent like this way. I always suggest to put it back because when we're gonna install this back plate, we don't want to have metal in between, which may cause a uh, short circuit or the computer to uh, reboot or something. Okay, so I've been watching many videos of people building computer or trying to do so. And what I found really, really crazy is why people always try to take off the computer from the case, sorry, from the box like this. This is gonna break, it's messed up, so there is a super easy way, which is this. Voila. Keep the box. And those things. And those things. Oh. So why do I keep the two cardboard boxes and the uh, padding material? Because I like to put this one here and the other one in between. So you see, it's impossible to scratch them, even if you're working fast or whatever your situation is. This way, you won't break anything. Now we got the case. So screws in here. I will take them out first. So. And I will spend some time to have a look of what's inside because obviously there are many screws, but most likely we, we won't need most of them. So Corsair is very, very kind with us. They are giving us some cable ties. And the, the screws, as you can see, are all divided in little bags. So don't open them all because there's gonna be a reason why. I'm gonna tell you in a second. So we know that these big screws are usually for cases fun. In this case, they are already installed, so we won't need basically this bag, so it can go in the box. These screws, not needed at the moment. We don't have uh, liquid cooling or any other components.